Okay, so how's everybody doing? So I want to talk a little bit about the history of the SRY Railroad and, and its initial impression upon me as a kid, like in the 70s, when I was a, you know, 11, 12 years old or so when I discovered this railroad when they were in this color livery right here. And where I grew up, uh, actually right close to the English Bay Branch, which is in Kitsilino. Now, if you want to know the, you know, the very beginnings and origins of, of this particular railroad, Rail Link, okay, and all their, um, well, the very beginnings of it, like, like uh, the origins before it, like that had to do with the Canadian Pacific Railway and the BC Electric. Like, for example, like I grew up just up the road from this, like this was the end of the line in Kitsilano, like right by the beach where I grew up. It's the BC Electric Station, the very end of near Vine Street or whatever, like down, like the beach is right here. But it never really went anywhere, like in that area, but it does tell you, like a real, it's a really easy read actually. And you can see, like this is the area, like right here. Okay, that I'll show you, like I grew up down here, like this is the approach down in Kitsilino and this line goes around the corner. You can see the North Shore Mountains there and then there's the Burrard Bridge and the old trestle and then this went off to Molson's. And then when you went around that corner, you can see this is where I played as a kid. This is where I experienced this railroad. <clears throat> Molson's Brewery is this way and they used to burn cars over here, called it the burn track, where they would burn the old BC electric into urban cars to get all the steel out of them. And then there was a, this is a Y in here where where they would turn around and then across here which the bridge is long gone now beside the Burrard Bridge uh, they crossed over to Vancouver City but this line under the bridge went down to Kitts Beach where I grew up as a kid as well it's kind of interesting then this is the yard like in the early 90s this is Trap Yard like BC well it became SRY Rail Link in the early 90s when Washington Court bought it but that's a couple shots from the Queensboro Bridge that I took of their yard like that's the shops there it's a great subject for end scalers eh? you know you could do the whole, the trap yard you know right and then staging off of that if you're into switching etc so that's pretty cool but i have a lot of research so in closing on that part here's their their main office which is called river drive but i call my model river road i didn't didn't want to copy verbatim you know like the road there that, that was just a decision that i made but um this is where it's called Southern Railway, which is SRY. SRY is the acronym for Southern British Columbia Rail, 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 Railway. Sorry. So, you know, they began like this. Like this was one of the earliest six axles that BC Hydro purchased in 1972. This is a Dash 2 by scale trains. You know, so they come out with this, you know, when I'm 62, right? Not 22 even, you know, but I'm going to show you my attempt at doing 381 here if I can as well. But this is the original paint job. And I'll show you a little bit of the sort of um, chronology of how this changed. So this railroad was sold off to a, um, when it became Southern British Columbia Railroad, like here's 382 right here. This was the next paint job after this one when they got rid of this yellow with the red stripe and the hydro logo and it became Southern British Columbia Railway, sort of the hockey stick. Um, I'll see if I have another photo here. Here's um, 382 from the front. Cool, eh? Not a lot of changes there, just paint really. They all had snow plows on the front and the rear, though. They, like, they looked identical on both ends, so that's the way they ran them. Mind you, this one doesn't have ditch lights on the rear, but some of them do. Uh, 381 does, and actually, I'd have to look again because <laughs> I'm juggling four locomotives, but some have ditch light. Like, I know 381 does, has them on the front and rear, but so, uh, a couple of the models don't. So yeah, so that's, oh, so there's 382 after this paint job, see? Then when Dennis Washington took over, so it was like this color here, and then it became this, the hockey stick paint job, I call it, which is, you know, BC Rail was doing this kind of thing as well. 
And then this dark blue, which I like with the big line head logo and then rail link on the side. Here's another shot of 382, just to give you some context. This, like this was later on, before the 90s, this is like the 80s, which I did a model of this long ago for a client, and uh, I don't know whatever, like I never saw it again, but it was a lot of fun, but it wasn't my favorite livery, you know, so that's, you know, subjective to each person, but, um, you know, that looked pretty good, but I didn't really care much for it. But that was only for a little while. And then what they did was, is they went with that, this color here. So I jumped to 381, this one, because this one here was the, is the, is the Atlas one that I just finished as the SD35 that I really wanted to do. And I'm glad I did it because this, this unit is MU to these two now like in 2024, like right from 2015 to 2024, they run all three of these or two of them together on the main line, like the 100 mile long line of SRY. So they're, they're the big six axle road power. And this was a unit that they brought up from Montana Relic, but I cover this in a four part series. If you go under videos and look, you'll see I cover the whole stripping, the build, the paint and everything, okay? So I'll just put that over here. Now this, this is 381. So let me just show you a couple of photos of when I built this. Like I, I built this up. I call it a bit of a Frankenstein um, model because I'll tell you why. Like I wanted to do 381. 381 is not a dash two. So there's four of them, right? There, there's a three dash twos. And then this was 381, the first one, AC. So this was a, well, what I call the Frankenstein, and, and so it's a, a Cato uh, chassis and drive, like original Cato uh, SD40 locomotive. So I didn't, so Cato didn't do a, a, a SD38. So I used an Atlas GP38 long hood for this. This is in the process of deckling. I haven't clear coated this yet, but I'll just talk about that in like in a few minutes. So this is. Uh, yeah, uh, Canon and Company thin wall cab, okay. Now I'll show you a couple of photos when I first built this before Glover Road was my attempt to do this version first and I modeled the whole interior of this cab. I was really getting into it, but I was never really happy with this, but this has been changed now from this. Like this locomotive has been repainted, I think three or four times. <laughs> I know it's crazy, eh? But I'm doing this because of this. Like I want to model this, like this period 2015-ish kind of with these sort of MU together when they changed from this more solid blue to this with the meatball. I just love the look and I have so much good video now of these operating. So that's part of the inspiration behind that. Yeah, so this was like Canon and Company fans. I scratch built this top non-dynamic because it was unique. See the, all the, it had all these holes on the top here that were patched up. I don't know why those were there. And then I scratch built the stacks. This is a non-turbocharged unit. And then I think I scratched in the air box as well. But uh, I was never really that happy with the paint job, even though I like the livery, the dark blue with the white line head logo. Like here, I'll just show you a couple of photos here. Like I've actually been on this unit. Uh, this was one before they changed to this meatball. Uh, it was smashed up here. It was hidden. This is hidden behind in Trap Yard. But I used to have a lot of leeway down there be before COVID. So... You know, they'd let me walk around the shop and, you know, and I've been on a lot of the, well, not all the local ones, but, you know, several. So here's 381. This was how, well, I originally was going to do it this, and then I changed to this because I was so inspired in the early 90s that that's why I painted it like this. So now seeing them on the road operating and the, and I, 
updated my layout and the theme. Now I'm going to the meatball for these, but not the GP9s or the earlier switches. I'm keeping the this livery for my switches and GP9s. So sort of a transition period there from 20, uh, 2012 to 2015. So, yeah, so this is 381, famous locomotive, you know, uh, still operating today. There's another uh, shot from the other side. And then this is uh, the interior, the cab of 381 that I was on. So that's why I modeled the cab. And I'll show you a couple of photos of that. Okay, so you can see why I modeled it the way I did, right? That was the inspiration behind this. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this one. I might just weather this and maybe run it as a heritage. I'm not really sure. But call me crazy, I would strip this in order to get this paint job to match these three. But I don't know, you know. Maybe I won't, maybe I will. Maybe I'll just weather this down heavily and... Or I don't know, but then it wouldn't really be a heritage. But I find it too bright and clean for my liking. But it is a neat throwback because you have 381, 385 with the dynamic that they eventually, you know, I think it was one of the reasons why they picked up this SD35 was because of the dynamic brakes. They don't have any dynamic brake units. And the and the 100 mile short line is a bit of a roller coaster out to Chilliwack from New Westminster. But this here is, you know, it's a really nice version. Um, there's a few mod, uh, details on this that aren't correct, but they're pretty much insignificant. Like they had sand fillers. They moved the sand filler hatch on the top and it's down on the back. Like on this one, I'll show you. See how, see the sand hatch filler? It's on an angle. They they just welded this. And the funny thing is, is when they welded this on, they just welded it right over the rail link, like decal or paint, like when they did it and then hand painted this. Okay, so you can see that I've added raw, like rail, the RA, and then ink, the last part of link, in the middle of the sand filler, they welded it right over the back of the long hood. They didn't even strip away, it looks like, the paint. They just welded this thing on. They probably just grinded it quick on the fly, right? I do admire them for doing that, for a hurried kind of thing. Get it back on the road, they were probably told. And the, why would they move the sand filler from up here down to here? Probably for safety, right? And look at this. Isn't this unique with the brake wheel on 381? This uh, SD38AC, that's unique right there, right on the back. Um, yeah, so, you know, the little red SRY would, be, would have been cut out. And then they just painted it by hand or a spray bomb, it looked like. I'll just feather that a little bit with a little bit of... Well, I'll just use a little bit of Vallejo, right? right. Remember how I put water base for touch-up and washes over sprayed to me? And this is all sprayed to me, all right? And then this, I can mix or blend over top. So that's what I'll do just to tweak that a bit. But that's just like on the prototype. So the point of this is that proves that this was the original color from the white line head logo. They painted out the lion head and applied this on, stenciled this on. This would have been more closer to this color, but over the years it faded because of the, it was a different paint or a newer paint or the underlying original paint here oxidized and bleached out the color they tried to match. That's my only explanation for that. Because why would this, this decal 
here on the original was on the original paint. Otherwise, they would have stripped the whole thing and repainted it, and you wouldn't have this. This is the clue that betrays this, right? Like this is this is still the original paint, and this is the original number, 381. Like they didn't repaint that. Well, they may have, but I doubt it. But it's a little bit faded more here. See, I left it like that. And then this was freshly put on. I imagine eventually when these get really bad, they'll just blast them down and, and uh, paint a whole new livery on them. Maybe they'll change the logo again. I do not know. And then right here for the number boards, I guess I should mention this while I'm at it. Right here, the number, number boards, I build up two or three, even four layers of gloss varnish from Vallejo. I just very carefully, like they're, they're flat number boards and I want to put the decal on and set them. I just started laying on, just blobbing on it, you know, a good generous layer of gloss, right? Of this, once again, it's number 70510 by Vallejo. I love this stuff for touch-ups. And then you can see how it, it, it looks like the glass over top, right? It's kind of nice touch, okay? <laughs> That's funny. Which brings me to this now, just in closing. Um, this, so this light blue is prototypical, right? And I was trying to figure out, like, why would they put... Like here, like I like the way this logo is more in the middle of the locomotive compared to, to, to the way they did this one, right? This is the most recent paint job on their fleet at SRY Rail Link. And I like how they, you know, they must have did the whole locomotive. You can sort of tell by looking at it. It looks like a brand new SD35 in 2024, you know. But I like the way they have it in the middle, not this rear one. But I think this is kind of neat to mention because it's a bit of an anomaly that I think modelers experience as well, as well as the prototype. And when we model, that's the unique thing about modeling the prototype is you get you can paint in or paint them as, you know, they are in the real world. And there's always a history and a story behind. Uh, I'm just decaling these now so you'll see a little bit of the under. Uh, this is just a semi-gloss on here to get a nice decal set here this will be finished eventually but this is where this is where this logo was if I can show you the uh, okay so here's so see where this line head logo it was right here so what they did with this is they didn't strip it all they kept the original paint which is more faded now than in this picture as in the real world But they just painted this out in the shop. It may have been closer to this, but it faded over time because of the underlying colors or whatever, whoever did it. Sort of a shop mod paint, I think. Just paint it, put the logo on, and put it back into service, right? That's what short lines do. But you can see where it, the old logo was. They, they, like they patched this out, right? It's been patched out. So this, this version has been patched out as well like this 382 is like this as well so that's interesting isn't it and so i've been working on this just repainting this locomotive because i wasn't that happy with it but i am now though and i show a little bit how i did this how i did this patchwork Show you this side here turned out really well and I find that when with the IPA base it'll it'll do a kind of a sort of a modeling kind of thin really it it'll do that with any color if you do super thin white with an airbrush with isopropyl alcohol uh, over top of a, any color like it'll fade it beautifully Th that I really like now with uh, this this is a little bit too severe, but the main color that I have, uh, I'm just going to use really thin, and I'm just going to just, with the airbrush, just dust that over a little bit. 
just to tone that down and then probably put a few washes with Vallejo after with just water, wet on wet, just to kind of make that look a little bit more faded. Okay, so that's what I'm doing with this one and I'm actually liking it because I'm revisiting it and I'm installing a new Loke Sound version 5 decoder. And I touched up all the paint, I weathered the blue down. I touched up and fixed some things that were really bugging me. Here's the old safety like spots or squares. Okay, and then that was where that white logo was like here from this side, see? That's where it was. But I'm really liking this now. Um, like I'm getting it to where I'm happy with it because I never really was. But the, but the interior is fully detailed, even though you can't totally see it. But the doors are thin wall, see? Thin wall cab. I really love this locomotive. You know, this is why I encourage people to uh, kit bash or, or build up your own and custom paint your own locomotive because they become really personal. You get really attached to them, right? You know? So, okay, I just wanted to share that with you because I think that that's really a significant part of the hobby. And it's, sorry, uh, it's one of the parts that I really love to do that I don't get a lot of time to do. So I tend to pivot now and again, like on the channel, because it's this journey of the whole build, the roster, car, like the whole deal, like building a themed shelf layout, whether it's freelance or prototype, it really doesn't matter. But this is part of modeling a railroad. And I think it's important. I wanted to share that with you. Okay. So all the best to you. Happy modeling. And I hope that you have a great day.